Today's Parents of Athletes topic is the importance of off-season conditioning. Joining me now is Coach Kevin Gendron from Better Athletic Development. Welcome back, Coach. Great Thank to have you. you. Great well, to be let's back. talk about off-season conditioning. Why is this so important? Oh, it's super important. Normally, uh, when you go through the season, it's a very it's a day-to-day -day structure, very stressful time. You have to raise your level uh, m mentally as well as physically for competition. So, the off-season becomes the time where we start to recover, recuperate. It's a good time for coaches to kind of reevaluate and assess the season, how the season went, uh, what the team did right, what they may have done wrong, what they need to work on for next year. And then the off-season conditioning is really when that time uh, is the time to take place to do those things, to work on, um, you know, your speed, your strength, and any, any weakness in your team's aspect not necessarily individually. A lot of high school athletes play more than one sport. Right. So what do you, how do you advise yeah, that makes it, that makes kids it difficult. If you're a multi-sport athlete, exactly. um, you're going from one season right into the next, maybe with a week or two in between, mm -hmm. and you don't really get that off-season conditioning, unfortunately. Um, I will we'll try to encourage kids who play, a th who are a three-sport athlete, that by sophomore, junior year, they may want to eliminate one of those and have an off-season so they can really concentrate on uh, building their bodies physically for the following season. Um, at the same time, it's good to play more than one sport, only because we don't want to develop overuse injuries, and that's another thing that off-season conditioning will help prevent. That is to prevent injuries. Absolutely. When we say off-season conditioning, what are we talking about? Are we talking about lifting weights, running? What are we doing? Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of high schools will initially think off-season conditioning is weightlifting. Let's get in the weight room, mm -hmm. let's lift some weights. That's what I think, too. And absolutely. But what happens is we build, you know, we'll, we'll obviously kids will increase strength, mm -hmm. they'll increase their power, um, increase muscle mass, which is important for most sports. Um, but at the same time, we build great weightlifters, but then we may be lacking in some of the other aspects of conditioning or athleticism, which is speed, agility, coordination, balance, which are all equally important, and they kind of go hand in hand. They kind of complement each other. So we really want to focus on all those aspects in the off-season, not just weightlifting. So you should look for a balance when you're Absolutely. talking about off-season conditioning. You should be talking to your coaches about um, what yeah, your kids are do. going through. Yeah, we encourage, we encourage the coaches to, you know, to work with a professional in the industry to come in and, and really complement what they're already doing, give them some pointers on uh, you know modifying their program if it needs to be so that it is a well-balanced program and not solely focused on weightlifting. In, in the football arena, um, it's always been the bench, the squat, and the power clean, which is an Olympic lift. It's a very, very technical lift. And I'm sorry, but a 14-year-old is not going to have the posture, not going to have the core strength and flexibility to really perform some of those lifts correctly. So it's really important that coaches address especially the younger athletes that are coming up and are going to be the future of their program and really identify what we call compensations, mm -hmm. muscle imbalances. There's been a real big movement lately of not training muscles but training functionality, training movement. We want athletes to, to have great mobility and stability. We want them to be functionally strong and flexible. Not necessarily big and muscular and strong, but then they can't get out of their own way. What role should parents play in this? Oh, parents, parents, obviously, if uh, your kid's not playing, obviously you go and speak to the coach, hey, what can my kid do to be able to play? If they get bad grades in school, you're going and talking to the teacher. But when it comes to off-season conditioning and what's going on in the weight room, they kind of just leave it up to the coach and say, yeah, go ahead. And I, in my opinion, I think they need to get more involved. They need to find out what's going on. If your kid has horrible posture, um, you want to know, is the coach piling weight on his back to do squats? He shouldn't be doing that because the kid can't sit correctly with nothing on him. So from that standpoint, I encourage parents to get, get involved and, and find out what's going on in the off-season conditioning. If your child's coming home saying, yeah, we had four kids throw up at practice today. That's not a know, good thing. That's not a good thing. Right. Um, you know, there are ways to improve conditioning and speed and agility and endurance without you know, having kids get sick. That shouldn't be happening. Great. Now we want to give a special shout out to SportsWorks for bringing us this topic and all of our Parents of Athletes segments this fall. Coach Kevin Gendron, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be back. <laughs> You're welcome. Don't go away. We'll show you another happy 5K Wheel of Fortune winner when Connecticut Style returns. <laughs>